Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. So uh, we're having chat room issues. Uh, we think it's yeah. on the chat server side. But anyway, that's why we're delayed. So hi, guys. How are you? Don't answer that. It's okay. I can't hear you anyway. Um, I can hear these guys, though. So uh, I'm Karen Hutton. We're doing uh, this really super-duper informal processing hangout called In Process because it just seemed like, you know, it seemed really deep and yet kind of shallow and said what it was and yet left something to the imagination all at the same time. It's a good name. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I have a new, a, a really fun bunch of friends here that are going to introduce themselves because we're, we're just, we actually have a couple things we want to talk about before we dive into processing that have to do with processing. But um, Annette Biggers, hey. Hi. How are Hi. you? Thanks for inviting me, Karen. Oh, you're welcome, Annette. I'm really glad you're here. Thanks. So that's Annette Biggers, and she's awesome. So tell us where people can find you, because I think that's important. Uh, you can find uh, me at triplecord.com, T-R-I-P-L-E-C-O-R-D.com, and heartforafrica.org. Um, and then here on Google and Facebook. Yay, she's everywhere. She's awesome. <laughs> you should check her out, circle her, follow her, whatever. So, that, if they, so it's got to be a social media that's where it's like your circle of stalkers. But it <laughs> probably, probably will never happen. <sighs> anyway, Dave Bell, whose fault this all is. <laughs> oh yeah, just blame me. Um, no, I, uh, okay. this is this is fun. <laughs> uh, I'll keep working on the chat room here. Um, okay, Dave is our our uh, Dave was the one who had the idea to do this little processing hangout and has been actually harassed me for months until I couldn't stand it anymore, and I said, okay. I'll do a couple. I mean, now it's kind of fun because, you know, we just invite our friends and hang out and, pro and have process and we talk. But that was Dave's idea. And Dave's is an incredible singer and he's a photographer. Go ahead. You can jump in anytime. I, my day job is teaching um, information systems, e-commerce, uh, that kind of stuff. But I do like to spend a lot of time doing photography and uh, hanging out here at, at uh, G+. And uh, anyway, I just... A lot, of, a lot of good friends found here. This is great. So, Yep, that's the truth. That is, And, you know, he's cl clearly a brainiac, and that's why <laughs> if he can't solve this chat room issue, it can't be solved. <laughs> that's all there is to it. So there's no pressure, Dave, because no matter what happens, you're a winner. Oh, you're sweet. Dave, in my eyes. <laughs> Elizabeth Hong. Hi. Um, yeah, my name is Elizabeth. I'm um, probably mostly on Google+. I also have a website, um, emhan, H-A-H-N, dot com, that really needs to be fixed. Um, but I mostly, I live in the central Sierras near Yosemite, and primarily uh, shoot landscapes and cows and all that kind of fun stuff. You do good cows. <laughs> I like your cows. And, and Are you a photographer full-time now? <gasps> oh, my God. Moo is making his appearance, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I wish I was time but no <laughs> one day one fine day you will be that way that would be awesome yes mm -hmm. <laughs> probably down the road a long ways well in the meantime you you take fantastic photos and we you have a lot of fun and we go on a lot of photo walks together yes we do which is we awesome. do lots more yeah we got some coming up actually and then Ron Clifford Hello, Karen. <laughs> it's so nice to be here with y'all. It's so nice to have y'all here with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm obviously Ron Clifford, and I'm at ronclifford.com. That's so hard to remember. I know. <laughs> I'm less. so lucky. Not everybody gets their name for everything. I've got Ron Clifford at Gmail and ronclifford.com. I'm, I'm so fortunate. You but, are. You're yeah. fortunate for so many reasons. Yeah, especially because I'm here with all of you. Oh, wow. <laughs> and you're up in the great white north. I am. Actually, it's the great wet north right now. It's been pouring rain all day. Yeah. Um, we did have some snow, but then it warmed up. I think today it was uh, 14. What is that in, in your temperature? It's like 60-something. Oh, hot. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah I know. It's like 60. It's almost 60 degrees. Yeah. 
I talked to a friend who's up in Canada also. Uh, let's see. Not It wouldn't be the Pacific time zone. It would be the time zone just one step east. Central. Yeah, and it was um, minus 25 Celsius. Yeah. Woohoo. Yeah. yeah. That was definitely central. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, wow, really? Because it's like 50 Fahrenheit and raining here. Yeah. Right on. Uh, well, that's fantastic. I'm just really glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here, too. I love the topic of processing, and I love the topic of in-process. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of like therapy for the uh, for the soul and the trigger finger. That's right. <laughs> and uh, for y'all who may not know who I am, I'm Karen Hutton. Uh, you can find me here on Google+. Plus. And, and on Facebook, um, I do. I'm a photographer. You can find me at KarenHuttonPhotography.com. I am also a professional voiceover person. Um, that site is KarenHutton.com. I do the voice for Stuck on Earth. Um, I have a project, my fabulous little project called Lil Galleries, which stands for Life Is Light uh, Galleries.com, which is a um, it's kind of turning into a a bit of a new form of gallery for photographers which combines voice and music and photography and presents art as a story in a whole new way. Annette has one. You'll have to check out uh, her little gallery show. It's fantastic. And I'm really happy to be doing this. And this all came about because Dave Bell actually just kept saying, you should do a I'd show. Just keep, keep poking and prodding. Yeah. yeah, just very gently. And then he would laugh and then he'd poke again and then he'd laugh. <laughs> Go to smack him. I, I, just, I just act friendly and... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. And, um, and you know, initially I was a little reluctant. I still feel a little bit weird because it's like I'm going to show you how I think about um, processing. And, you know, there's so much to it. It isn't like I can tell you everything I do because we'd be here for the rest of our lives because I'm still learning and growing and evolving as we do. Um, but I, I kind of decided that we all, you know, have our own way of approaching our processing and our photography and it's really kind of interesting and fun to kind of get inside the the thinking of somebody else and how they do it and I thought on that on that sort of note and and I don't know platform I would be willing to do it because truly it just it feels weird to stand up and say oh well, I know what I you know I, you should learn from me because whatever I'll learn from you as well so therefore my my trusty band of friends down here were you know sometimes I either forget how to do something or want to know how to do something and they'll say just drag that push that button drag that thing and vice versa so it's we get to share we get to share what we know and grow and learn together which I love um, but I thought before I actually started doing the screen share which I will do in a few minutes um, I got to thinking about tonight and I thought because I wanted to do something kind of simple you know like a barn or a barn and a of course, Annette's here. I could do Captain Hook, but he's he was a little more involved. But anyway, um, and I thought, well, you know, we can shoot really normal things like a house or like a barn or just something simple and make something beautiful out of it. But there's a thought process that goes along with processing, and it starts with setting up your shot, taking your shot, and having a having a you know something in your imagination about why you shoot that thing that you're shooting and um, and then you and then you know when you go to process you sort of have to look at it and say well what am I trying to accomplish here you know what's the deal where am I going why and I think those are important questions and um, I know Annette you and I've talked about that a fair amount and uh, we were talking earlier before we started the broadcast you were starting to go and I said wait let's share that with everybody because it was just so interesting so can you roll the tape back to kind of where we... Can I just jump in here for a second yeah. um, just to let the audience know our, our chat uh, platform uh, live is acting kind of weird. It's not showing people um, uh, all the chat. So we're just going to do it right in the uh, in the uh, event. Um, oh, are we? Okay. In, in process event uh, for right okay. now. So you can chat there. Anybody who just said who... You can click on events on the left of your page, and uh, if you said yes, you were going to go, you can chat right there in the event itself. Ah, here's a link. Dave, maybe you could put that in the... Because oh, sure. I think some people are seeing it in the chat. Yeah, we've never no. had this trouble with this. This has always no, been a pretty bomb-proof uh, chat platform. 
I'm not quite sure what's going on. So anyway, Annette, you and I have talked a lot about this, and you have, um, I always love hearing what you have to say about processing and how and why and all that, and communicating and story and all that stuff. Um, well, what we were talking about a little bit earlier is that um, I always try to go a little bit deeper um, with the why and the how and the what. And, um, you know, like you were saying before that um, you're setting up your shot, you know, you can just take a picture of something really simple like a house and that sort of thing. And those things um, can teach you so much about technique and um, how to make something ordinary really beautiful and super ordinary, extraordinary. Um, but then you get to a place, I think, in um, your, your life where it's no more fulfilling for you, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's probably what you're talking about is the fulfilling part. And um, you, you have to go beyond, I think. Um, you, sometimes you need to go beyond that, the technique part and all of that, and just search for a, um, a how. And what I mean by that is how it's communicated. Because what you're going to want um, out of this artistic journey is fulfillment. And that comes from you know, bringing people joy, you know, they know, they see your work and, you know, they respond to it. If nobody responds, it, it becomes empty, you know, and, you know, responsibility is really the ability to respond. And so when you're doing your art, I think that it's really important to think about how are you going to make people or enable people to be responsible, to be able to respond. And it's not, and I think that a lot of people will do the wow factor or they think that shock is the only way to do it. And um, we started talking about when I was a, um, um, a stage project production manager for Les Miserables. And um, one of the things that we just drilled into the artist or the, the actors is that if they sung that show um, with anger, they were going to lose their audience. And I've seen the show performed where the actors are angry um, and they're supposed to be passionate. It's a, it's a very different show. If you ever go see that on Broadway and the actors are performing it through um, a very shallow place of anger, usually that's what happens. That's like the default of uh, actors because it's very easy to act out anger. Mm -hmm. And so when they see that, they're like, oh, we're supposed to be mad at, you know, we're, we're the rebels, so we're mad and we're angry. And it's very easy to communicate it angrily. And um, one of the things that we were teaching the actors through that, um, that show is that you have to go back to passion. Passion is a deeper place. Um, it's a place of desire. And um, when we're making our artwork, if we think in the same way, that we're going to go in, into a deeper place of desire. Like, what do I want to communicate first, but how I communicate it um, is what's going to get that response, that correct response from your audience. Um, you know, for instance, if you go see Les Mis and the cast is angry, you literally are miserable at the end of the <laughs> you know. But if and the you name is not up, supposed to refer to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And but if you go see the show and um, it's been directed well and the actors are um, they're professional performers and they get that, they 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 come from a place of desire from the heart, then you leave feeling so uplifted and um, just the response is completely different, you know, from the audience. And so I think when we're um, processing our pictures, we should ask our, start asking ourselves questions like, how do I want to communicate this beauty or this beautiful scene or whatever it is that you're photographing? Um, because if it goes too dark, because it's really, okay, here we go back to default. If it's too dark, and it communicates the wrong thing. It's it, the how is not there. Um, and some things are just easy, um, but they're not uh, creating an ability to respond to it the way you're wanting 
you know right. and I think that if you go to a deeper place as an artist where you're really searching and going deep in your heart for reasons why and, and how you're going to communicate and that sort of thing then people can uh, it's, it can it can be life changing for a person because you could turn on a light bulb for somebody and help them understand life um, maybe where they were confused at some point or whatever but um, and as an artist, I think it's really important to live a life of fulfillment and significance. Mm -hmm. So it, it's re I think it's, um, I think that it's um, a really um, a good place for an artist to be where you just take time to develop the inner voice, you know? Yeah. A little yeah. deeper place, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I mean, some people reside more on, you know, like Trey Ratcliffe will always say, people know what is beautiful inherently. Mm -hmm. And I think he's right. Yeah. I think we really do. Um, and pretty pictures is really good. And I think it's important to think about what's beautiful. And since this is the show that I was asked to, to talk about my process, mine is I do take it deeper. I, you know, I, I write, I hear stories when I take photos and I, hear music when I take photos and when I process. A lot of people have music playing when they're processing photos. Um, I usually hear it in my head so I don't usually play it because it throws me off um, because I can, I, I don't know, it just is something that I'll sit for hours processing and it's silent in the room but in my head and in my self it's not. So <clears throat> for me it's it's personally much more I guess fulfilling and also because I think at different points in your life, I think it's you know like I want, I want to leave a legacy in my lifetime. I'm on the I'm on the older side of all of y'all's, and um, I'm thinking about well what what do I want to stand for? What do I want to count for? What do I want when people see my work? How do I want them to feel? Of course, I was an actor too, and you always had to think about that stuff then too. But um, I just thought that was something kind of worthwhile mentioning. Some people will go, oh, for God's sake, just show me how to do it. <laughs> and then <laughs> we'll get there. And um, and then other people, you know. But if, but if they skip this, I think they're missing a big a big piece of it. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, you know, like a robot playing a piano. It's, you know, it, it can go through all the motions of, of technique, but without the, the reason behind it. Right. Um, then it. it it somehow doesn't get all the way there. What do you guys think about the notion of, um, you know, visual? We are all essentially visual in, in, like, when you tell a story, you get the picture of what it is you're going to say, and then you find the words to express, and hopefully the, the words somehow match the image that you have. Um, so some would say that if we were in our completely natural primal state, we wouldn't even need words. We would just be somehow magically communicating with images um, <clears throat> I think images are really important I'm not sure I'm not sure I think we wouldn't have language because we have voices you'd have to have music too yeah I think so too and I think that um, to find I mean I'm kinda of jumping around of, of, of uh, little worlds here but yeah. having, having your having your voice which is your point of view but also um, telling a story with your photos or you know that notion some people do that some people don't do that I see, what do think? I see each one is 50 percent of the equation if you lose your your vision people would see you as having a handicap or a disability mm -hmm. and if you lost your voice the, the same thing we we see that those as as, as a, a disability of some kind and when they work together we feel that it's more complete. Mm -hmm. I think that the image, the, the visual image, along with words, is the complete image. And like Elizabeth said, music too, like you're doing with little galleries, you can find spoken word, music, images, you take the whole gamut together. So I don't, I don't I'm kind of of the camp, it's all equal. It's all part of, of the process, like the, there's a word's gonna come up a lot, part of the process. And um, I'm primarily visual, but it's not without story. Um, Dave can attest. I preach about story when I talk about developing your own vision, and it's about 
making your pictures communicate a story. You don't right. have to have the words, but they create their own story, which really is universal words. Right. And we didn't mention, um, Ron, that you are part of the Google Plus mentorship program for photographers. So you're, right. yeah. you're helping, you know, young and growing photographers with their art, and this is part of what you teach them as well. Yeah, that's right. I, I focus on, on um, the focus of my particular program is on increasing your creative vision and kind of finding that story within your work. Right. <laughs> yeah. So does anybody have anything to add to that before? I I say I dive in with great alacrity, but now that we've added screen leap to this whole thing, I'm like, oh God, which which one do you do first? Um, so those of you who would like to follow along when, when I do a screen share and sort of show what I am doing, we have a fantastic tool that Jason Joseph, who you should also be following on Google+, Plus, Jason oh, nice. Joseph, turned me on to screenleap.com. It allows you to share your screen in HD. I'm putting the, that link into the chat area oh, thank you. So, for the event. And uh, I'm going to turn that on here in a second, although it's sort of new to me, and I'm not exactly sure whether you're supposed to share your screen in the Hangout first or do the other thing first, but I think I'm going to turn the screen leap on. Broadcast my screen. And then I'm going to screen share my desktop. <laughs> wow, that was interesting. One takes over the screen high. I'm sharing. I'm going to pause sharing for just a second because <laughs> this is just so fascinating. Wait, pause. So I'm pausing. <laughs> what happened to my screen share? This is so funny. Yeah, I did a show for <laughs> almost a year. We screen shared all the time, and I've lost my screen share. Oh, there it is. Okay, thank you. Uh, sure. Yeah, you're sharing. There uh, we go. Yes. <laughs> All right, now. That's it. So that's uh, where you're going to want to go. So I'm going to resume sharing and go over here to this little window. Now, are you seeing my um, yes. bridge? Oh, yeah, yeah. My only problem is I only turned one monitor on tonight, and I'm losing real estate here. <laughs> Works on your iPad, too, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm losing real estate really fast. <laughs> So yeah, you can watch it on your on your phone, on your I, iPad. I have to admit, though, this uh, the screen sharing app, the Screen Leap, is fantastic clarity. It's yeah. really great. I uh, yeah, it's pretty great. I have to say. Um, I wanted to do one thing. I wanted to show you now. A lot of I do shoot a lot of HDR, um, and people think everything I do is HDR. A lot of times what I do is I will, like this barn, for instance. I love old barns. The reason I love old barns is I grew up on a ranch, and my grandmother had a ranch. And, um, man, it was just such a great time growing up around, you know, horses and animals and old barns, and there's such character in the wood. Um, this particular barn that I'm sort of pointing at here, can you see that? Mm -hmm. This red barn is in the uh, <clears throat> south of Lake Tahoe, up in the mountains. It's probably, I would guess, at mm, 8,000 feet, I think. And this barn has seen some pretty rugged winters, and it's just, it's just such a great, great old barn. And it's the wood has got so much texture, and I don't know who owns it. It's always closed up tight every time I, I drive by. But it's just sitting out there, you know, by the road. But it's just sitting there all by itself in this gorgeous, you know, Ponderosa Bonanza, you know, scenery of the Sierras. And I took a lot of pictures of it. But I just thought for tonight I would show you this one because what I this this particular photo I love old gates too because when I was little I used to struggle with them so much and I became very um an aficionado of, of gate fasteners, you know, because when you're little, you're, they, got, they just have to work easy or it's really hard to open them, but you have to to get your horse out or whatever. So I, I became a studier of, of gate. So I love the gate and I love the leading line of the gate here and the perspective of the leading line of the barn and how it just sort of leads you into its little world. Um, and I shot it seven exposures, as you can see, but I'm going to take you over here to Lightroom. 
that's not the image that's another image um, and here are our exposures now I actually processed it as an HDR and I hated it it was just didn't it's like it has so much character all by itself that it really did not need HDR and there was not so much contrast up here or over here that it had a problem so I ultimately I did process this once before and I posted it um, I like this exposure I like this really well and um, I think it tells the story it's got all the details that I want I know that I can fill this in I'm not gonna have a problem with that I don't even think I want to crop it I think I just like it I think I just want to bring out what attracted me to this in the first place which was the age you know the 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 gritty um, over time I mean look at this over here it's tongue and groove I mean there were some na some old-fashioned nails here and there but I just got I just this blew me away this was tongue and groove and somebody nailed a board here to kind of keep it from bending I guess so I have now usually I go through a process where I you know spend a lot of time on photos and go through many layers and so on and so forth this one cracked me up though because I have Trey Ratcliffe's presets and I tried I was sort of like um I was like do I want to do something crazy you can see the previews up here you know when you see this up here in this square in the upper left you can see the previews of any of the uh, effects you know and that's kind of interesting but it's kind of like oh and then I lose my whole my, you know my whole purpose in taking that but what I thought was well I wonder if it would be just too crazy to go come on my computer is a little slow to do a little crispy crisp start and, and it's not it's pretty subtle and I'm gonna undo it for a second because in my original I've lost a little bit over here I love the I love the even the gravel on the ground but it's kind of bright and I don't want to have to fix it by hand so I don't all the time whoops yeah I, I do like that one as a starting point for yeah some things uh, uh, um, not too many but some yeah some <laughs> yeah and I, I mean to, what, that one a few times uh, but then I'll, you know always tweaked from there right and I don't particularly like super super gritty HDR but this isn't I mean this is an individual uh, single shot and I do really like this and I just kind of like it a lot like that however I also am at a point it's funny because I started in black and white photography and when I go to galleries that feature you know the Ansel Adams and the Edward Weston's and the you know fantastic older ones and they're all very kind of artistic and a little bit dark and I'm like ooh, that was my background and I don't know later in life I started craving depth and color and light and <laughs> and that's sort of where I'm at now um, so I'm just gonna take this over to Photoshop here and I'm gonna take I really only made one Lightroom adjustment and I didn't change anything in particular so I'm just gonna take it over there um, see how fast my computer works with a hangout going isn't this interesting it's a little doggy but hey we'll get there the only thing I really want to do I think and every time I do a photo if I redo photos you know they turn out different sometimes I'll just do them different just cuz um, so I want to show you a thing now I'm gonna show you this thing first of all let me just say none of us were you know sprung out onto the earth knowing how to process digital photos um, our own taste in what we like to do changes over time and I learned you know I learned photography 30 years ago but I learned to process digitally within the last few years and so my sensibilities were in place but you know the tools I learned from people who got there before I did so I've learned from Trey Ratcliffe I've learned from Jaime Ibarra you know he does color he has a color way he works with color that is just mind-blowing and fantastic and if you ever have the chance or you know contact him and want to work with him it's just he's unbelievable so I'm gonna show you one thing only one thing that, that he showed me with this photo um, I've learned I've learned from Brian Matias and I've learned from 
um, Nick Software and On One Software their tutorials, which are showing that showing you their software. But it's the best free education you'll ever get. I swear to God. So there's lots and lots of ways to learn how to learn techniques and how to think about things and process things. This again, I'm going to say, is a is a piece of a Jaime trick. What did I just do? I should probably undo that. All right. So here I have, I'm in Photoshop now. I'm going to come over here and down here is a, um, is, an, is, is a layer that I'm going to, I forget what you call it. You know, I forget names. Just get used to it. Anyway, this thing, the circle with the, you know, it's half light and half dark, whatever that is, solid color. I'm going to go with black. But here I'm going to make a blending adjustment that is going to be soft light. And it does a thing. But and what I like is that it, it fills this area, which is a little bit too bright. But what I'm going to do is and it comes with a uh, a layer mask. It comes with its own layer mask. I love that. I didn't have to shop for that. Um <laughs> I didn't have to order. I didn't have to go to Amazon. It was Why just freaking tell awesome. Me? It cost me a fortune to work in that program. I know. And you'll <laughs> notice, if you will, uh, some people don't like that I do this because they can't see that well. You know, if, if I were only considering you, I would do, whoa, what's going on with my thing here? Come on. If I were only thinking about you, I would do this. But I can't work like that. I can't see what I'm doing. It needs to have a frame, you know, it needs to have some black around it. So essentially what that did was it made this red a little bit richer filled in here. It made this a little bit dark. Um, but it's taking me toward what I want to do, which is this is the area. There's the texture, and there's where it is, and it's a nice day, and there's puffy clouds, and there's all this great texture. But these leading lines is taking me into its little world. Do you see that? So I love that little world. And I want you to love it too. So um, I'm going to brush. So what I'm doing is I've got this over here. On the right, we have a layer mask. I'm going to go over here and pick, choose this brush, brush tool. And I'm going to set the opacity at, I don't know, I'm going to try 13. Why not? And here's a neat trick. Now, OK, this is the coolest trick. I don't know. I never hear anybody talk about it, but I learned it in one of those I don't know if it was X-Rite Photo or if it was Nick or one of the other ones. I know that it was Joe Brady. I remember that. I, I do this all. I know what you're going to show us. I do this all the time, and yeah, nobody the, else does. The control option thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I love this. Up and down so fast. I know so fast. So here you see my circle, right? Okay, and I don't forget what it is on a Windows machine though. It's on a Alt right click. Yeah. It's Alt right click. Yeah. Okay, so on a, on a Windows machine, this is Alt right click. On a, on a Mac, it's Control Option. Hold those two buttons down. Press your. I'm using a Wacom, so I'm pressing my pen to the pad, and I've just locked down this, um, you know, what a circle. <laughs> Me and my words. <laughs> yeah. This is another reason. Circle if tool. I, it's a what? The circle -y tool, yeah. Circle -y tool, yeah. <laughs> my brush tool. If That's I. That's the technical term, yes. If I drag my pen to the right, it gets bigger. If I drag it to the left, it gets smaller. I love this because I can work so freaking fast. Now, what happened to my color? My computer is doing funny things. Wow, it's never done that before. You'll have to. T I guess that means you'll have to take my word for the fact that right makes it bigger, left makes it smaller. If I go up, well, you can see it in the um, diameter. And what it's referring to is like if you want it to be soft and feathery, you drag it down. If you want it to be harder on the edge and have a more defined edge, you drag it up. And normally, I, it's red. And oh, there it is. You can see There's it a little, a little bit. bit red there. That's weird. Eh? It must that be the hand. I don't know why it's doing that. Yeah, because usually it is bright red. Well, because you're yeah. over the red barn, you couldn't see it. I don't know. I, well, it's usually much redder. I could see oh, it over okay. the barn, and I can certainly see it down here. Yeah. Anyway, can you see that it's sort of pale? Yeah, I can yeah. see it. So that's full. It's you know sharp to the edge. This is feathered. That's smaller, bigger. So I want feathered, and I want it fairly large because I don't want to make stripes, if at all possible. And I'm just going to go in here and start doing this. I love to brush. You know, people say, oh, well, 
you can go to Lightroom and just do blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't want to. I want to make a cup of tea and sit by the fire and kind of, you know, have a nice time. I like to brush. Yeah. I can't draw and I can't paint. My sister can and I have friends who can to save my life. But um, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> and I find it strangely fulfilling. So all I'm doing is brightening up this area where I want to draw the eye because to me that's... Now, how much, what, what, uh, what is the percentage of flow you're using? Because it's coming yeah. up slowly. Since it's hard for me to see, you know, flow. See, this is where really I'm using... I am using I'm using one of these that are fuzzy around the outside. See, this is the other thing about doing a little hangout show like this. You talk about flow and all these tools. I'm like, I have no clue. Yeah. I don't know. It's it fuzzy. Just does what it does. But so when you say flow, so I mean, what the heck? Well, go straight up to the bar instead of there, right where the the bar is above your picture. There will be opacity and flow, and a couple other little gizmos to the right of of your dialog box there. And flow should probably oh I, over here. It looks like you're painting it somewhere around ten or fifteen percent. Yeah, no clue. That's why it's um, transparent. Yeah, because the flow, yeah, the red was transparent. Is that but this? It shows up even when my flow is low, so that's weird. Maybe it's a Mac thing. Yeah, I don't know. It's never done it before. But anyway, I just thought I would ask. Anyway, yeah, it's one of those things. I don't know. It's gonna it be low works. flow. So this is this is you know hopefully this sort of thing is encouraging because you really don't have to know everything to get good results. I certainly don't. <laughs> um, want a little more in the gate. And the other thing that I want is this is really good. I actually really like this. Uh, some people would call it crispy, but honestly, the real thing's pretty crispy. Mm -hmm. The one thing I sometimes will do because. Again, this is good, but I do love color. Um, and I'll use a plug-in like Nick. I just, Nick Color Effects Pro. And sometimes I'll go over there just to see. There's a couple of plugins they have that I'll play with. Um, what is this one? Contrast. That's too crazy for me. A little, little bit much. I love dynamic contrast sometimes. Dynamic contrast does a thing like that. It kind of it's contrast, but regular contrast will go, woo! It'll really go crazy. Dynamic is a little more la 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 la. Okay, sound effects. I told you. You're right. You've got them technical terms right down. That's proof. See, that's Sounds because I hear I hear them as you know little bits of music. But the sunlight filter, the one thing about that day, the reason I saw this barn driving along with all this gorgeous green really it was in uh, when was it it was in May so everything really was green and all of a sudden BAM out of the side of my eye I see this barn it was this red so it was really redder than um, it looks without like this it was actually redder it was actually like this and I associate that red with a with a type of barn and a type of experience in my life and I just loved the pop and that's about what to me it felt like it looked like hmm. so I'm gonna add that little bit of skylight filter so it just does that now yeah so I, I mean I'd probably kinda leave it like that tonight tomorrow I might feel differently yeah I like that what do y'all think? I want to walk oh, I'm, I'm all kind of liking wanting to go into that. I want to go in the barn. I want to go visit. Yeah, it's really it's really an interesting interesting spot. So that's the barn. I'm sitting here looking at it, going, okay, just because we're sharing how we think. This is this is whoops. Oh, that's the uh, that's the uh, the original with. <laughs> With the adjustment this is what I just did there's one other thing sometimes I do I don't always do this because actually I like the crispiness of this but sometimes what I'll do is I'll soften it um, I just installed a new on one perfect effects perfect photo suite 7 haven't even looked at effects the new one oh look at that I gotta enter my license I'm gonna do the demo which means it's gonna come with the uh, 
it's going to come with it's going to put a, a um, what, are, what do you what do you call it a uh, watermark so, yeah watermark there you go so I haven't installed the new one yet I'm still loving <laughs> the old one but. I want to put a little bit of I'm curious more than anything I don't know if I'm going to like it and that's extreme a little bit of glow sometimes I'll do this if I want to romanticize something a little bit like it's a little bit more of a my memory and um, and I'm like I want to soften it I don't want it to be quite so harsh and I don't know if I would like it on this or not so I thought I would just give it a try and that's what I do sometimes and I go well, I don't know if I really like it but maybe you know I might I might paint it I do a lot of painting in sections like I might paint it into this area or make the trees softer and this harsher um, which you can actually do in so you have my brush I just pressed B this is a, sh a shortcut for your uh, for your brush and um, I don't know where they put the brush usually it pops up but in any case I don't really think I want um, I don't think I want to put any any glow on it I think I really like it kind of crispy mm -hmm. the way it is and that there is the old barn so I'm not going to save that so does that make sense it was good Karen I love that yes. so we have options now <clears throat> we have a little I I wanted to stick with things that you know you might normally shoot you know if you live in a town like Portland you might have some you know urban exploration kinds of places I grabbed the wrong finished one that's so funny they look so similar I'm going to show you the finish um, a gar you know an old garage which is which is this one and oh, yeah. another old barn and then of course there's Daniel and our little shoot hmm. and this is what I do I you know I'll process a bunch of photos and here's one I want to actually do that is a single photo this one I want to do um, which is a train track in a forest that I want to do as an HDR but I think maybe what do you guys what do you want to see does it matter you know that um, garage shot that you did um, I love the detail in that and um, I was wondering if it took you a lot of time to pull that all out did you do it? Um, it was a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. But. It looks so custom to me. It was very custom. So what I'm doing now is I already converted those images to JPEG and I just loaded them into, I use Photomatics. Um, there are so many ways to make an HDR image. And I, you know, I'll hear the discussions. Well, I use, you know, HDR right. soft. Well, I do it in you know CS Photoshop CS6, and I do it this way. Great, do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a million ways to do any one thing. Um, I do it this way. It just for me, my vision is tends to be. Um, I get really irritated with things that are in my way, so I like things that think like I do and help me get the job done without making me focus on the tool too much that's just uh, me as an artist I guess um, I don't necessarily need to sit there and figure out every little thing about Photoshop or anything else that I'm doing to be able to enjoy using the tools that I know to create the image that I want now the more complex it gets you know like I keep looking over the shoulder of you know Tanya Rocha and Robin Griggs Wood and other people who do these composite images and I'm like that looks like fun and I know that's a whole other ball game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, yeah. Yeah. okay, so I did this last time, but I'll go through it quickly again. This is Photomatics. This is the seven images combined. I'm going to go back to default so that I can just go through putting it all together. Maximum strength. Um, there is plenty of black in here, but. I want to see what I like a lot of black in an image. Yeah, there we go. I actually want that black in there. I am going to find the next thing is to figure out lighting adjustments mainly moves the blobs of light around. To the left, it tends to be more HDR ish. To the right, is more supposedly natural. 
Um, I usually like it somewhere in here. I don't like to get too crazy. I like it. I like a scene like this that's sort of altered, but like altered state. Not it's real, but it's not real. It's like a movie. I love cinema and movies and looking at the color palettes that they use. And any of you who are like that, that's another reason why Jaime Ibarra and his color, the way he works with color, and he coaches that stuff. He teaches you that. It's just phenomenal. So I need to see more of it though. So the luminosity I bring up. It's got a lot of contrast in there, but sometimes I'll run this up and just sort of see. I start about now to look at this histogram over here because I don't want this sliding up the sides too much. Ideally, eh, I don't know. I'm like... Was this a, just an open door to the world um, behind you? What's the what's lighting this yeah. room? Yeah. Uh, you mean where am I standing? Yeah. So this is... Okay, so up on the summit here in... Uh, up on, well, by, it's near the Yuba, Yuba River, near Donner Summit. There's a, um, you know, people live there. <laughs> and this guy, so Brian Matish was up visiting um, one time. We were driving out looking for scenes and uh, to shoot. And we drive by this garage that was open. I mean, it's usually closed when I drive by. That day it was open and he was working on a 1937 Ford pickup. And... You know, I don't know if you know Brian Matias, but he is a. Now I'm going to move this thing again. He is an urbex. You know, that's his roots. I like this, like this. So I'm going to go ahead and process it. Um, so we slammed on the brakes and turned around and, and went in really nicely. Asked, you know, it was just such a fabulous garage. You know, we're photographers. We're just driving around looking for stuff, and we love your garage. Could we shoot? And he was so sweet. He just let us come in and have our way with his garage. So where I was standing. My back was to the rest of the garage. To my right was the truck. And this was, see, I grew up, my dad and my uncle met, you know, fabricated and made everything. Like my dad was a well, I mean, my uncle was a well driller, made his all, all his own equipment. My dad was a white collar guy, but he grew up knowing how to make, repair, fabricate anything. He fixed all our own cars. He, you know, he just, this is very familiar to me. So, and it smelled familiar and I just loved it. And it's so freaking neat. So at this point in photomatics, I don't really like the contrast. I mean, if you even use mild contrast, check this out. I'm like, what are you thinking? That is just way too much. The colors, Never mind. They, I just don't like how it handles colors, but I do really love the sharpening. It makes me nuts, especially on a photo like this. See how sharp that gets? Can you see that, or am I doing this right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Done. Now I want to. Did I already process? I just got to save it. No, I guess it. Already, it's really weird having people watch you do this thing that you do that you do really normally and naturally. Until somebody's watching you, and you're all spastic and like can't even. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, that had, thing. Had some comments in the chat that uh, you really helped explain the difference between dynamic contrast and regular contrast with the sound effects. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I, 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 we all have our own vision of of these tools that have all these names that you know don't mean anything. You know, like oh, you know that squiggly thing or that. Yeah, exactly. I think we all do that. Yeah. I mean, I've always been terrified of showing anybody anything because I can't remember words, much less what any of this stuff's called. Um, and so, you know, the thing that goes, and then, and then, <laughs> works much better for me. So, anyway, so here I've highlighted, there I got all separated because I didn't set this up the way I normally do. But anyway, these are the original photos. And down here is my little HDR thing. I never leave an HDR just photomatic style. I always um, take it into Photoshop. I like Photoshop. But the one thing about this is I know, well, I don't know. I'm going to need the scene outside the window. I remember that I should have exposed one really, really dark to get everything out the window, and I didn't. So I forget which ones are going to be best. So I'll just bring them all. I like Bridge. I don't know. I like anything that works without pestering me too much, and, and Bridge works my nerves sometimes, but it does this. You go up to Tools, Photoshop, load files into Photoshop layers, and then you have a sip of tea. <laughs> <laughs> and
and you wait a little bit. I just love looking at all of the stuff in this photo. I do too. I mean, I the Grateful really Dead to the tractor seats to that guy's office chair or whatever's way in the back. I know, and this little light back here. Yeah, I like. Yeah. It's almost like Santa's workshop, and this. Is, I like. Is Waldo in there somewhere? Can I we... know. <laughs> Now I want to fix this flow thing, and I can't. I don't know. I don't know what you mean. How you make it more red? But it doesn't matter. Now, I, now I'm gonna have to. After this is all done, I'm gonna go. What is wrong with this thing? Let me go fix it. All right. So, okay. Now the thing about um, one of the reasons I, I don't know if this one did it too badly or not. This might be okay. Oftentimes with photomatics, like you know, this is all blown out here. I pull this in really close to see where where the image is broken. Because it breaks, because you know you throw you crunch it like this, and it gets crunchy, a little crunchier than sometimes. Actually, this one's pretty good. This isn't bad at all. Some people would actually just use this, but not me. Okay, that's actually pretty good. A lot of times, what you'll see are what burned are out places. Which, which lens is that again? This I actually sold this lens. This was the um, eight to fifteen fisheye Canon. Okay, so I'm just inspecting. I'm seeing where I want it sharper and what I have to actually repair. And there's not too much. This is pretty grainy right here. But okay, so that tells me I don't really need the. Mm, I lie. I do need that. I need that one for yeah, this area yes. right here. Okay, now. Because I'm a thrill seeker, this is how I do it. Okay, so I went I went over here and, and made another layer mask. Boom. So the first thing I do is I go through and try to like fix the image. In other words, this is blown out and not looking so great. So I'm going to I don't know actually yeah that's going to have to be that one. And so um, wow that's huge. All right. So we're going to make this be a hundred percent. We have to make sure this square is black and that one's white. And then I go to town in here. And why is it? I guess it just isn't. I'm going to make this a little smaller. Because what I'm doing is I'm painting this background in so that it isn't so um, blown out. And I'm having a little issue with, I don't know, because this is all chromatic, chromatic aberrationed. <laughs> Chromatically aberrated. <laughs> okay, I'm just I'm not gonna worry that this is dark because I don't really think that's the worst thing in the world, and I can <clears throat> fix it with a subsequent layer if I really if it bugs me. But I also know. And th oh, here here's a good example of what happens. See how this is all kind of yeah. broken and pixelated. Um. So what I do is I go through and I go. Okay, now where am I again? Okay. There's more or less my balance of my image. Here's where it breaks, but I do want this to not be, whoa, not to be too dark. Oh, and you see down here how it's really grainy? And that's because it's really meant to be dark and not that light. But I could use that one for this section, or I could use this one. And I think I'm going to use this one because this has a little bit of glow. I like that. So I'm going to wait to fix this until I'm done with these windows because these windows bug me and I, I remember the first time I did this I never really could get it quite right because see even the darkest one I just should have shot a really 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 dark one and I forgot <laughs> I wasn't paying attention but anyway so uh, it happens <laughs> there's a question for you if you went back to that original darkest image still in raw could you pull out some more Darkness out of that by oh, um, that's by darkening one. it before you put it in photomatics or or even here I don't know. You know what I could do. You know what I do if I want to do that. I don't know if I want to take the time here. Yeah, it's, it's possible. A it's possible. Question. Yeah, theoretically, I'm. I could probably go into Lightroom is where I would do it. Um, this is not really that productive. This really didn't help it at all. That was fun. <laughs> okay. Um. Let me see what this other one looks like. I would go into actually probably Lightroom and um, try lowering the highlights and the whites. See what that did. You know, play with the play with the shadows 
whites, highlights, and and blacks and see if I could pull some of this back in because very often you can do that like with clouds you know that you think oh there's no definition there you can actually make clouds by doing that I don't know if that would work there so I would I could go over to Lightroom do that with the raw export it in the same size you know in this case it's 6100 across and 300 ppi and then pull this in as a layer yeah. pull that one into this as a layer it's just if I do that we're gonna be here all night as opposed to all night. I, I think that's fine. You've explained what you would do. I think. In, you know, yeah. I often blend back from my original images in Photoshop when I'm doing HDR work. Yeah, and I mean, I'll, I'll even you know run them through. Like I'll run a layer through a process and then blend it. I mean, then you know merge it and blend it with. I'll do. I'll do all kinds of things. Um, anyway, that's all I want out of that image. So what I did was I just combined it and merged them, because I've got to work through these other layers. Okay, this is the one I wanted to use for... Am I going too slow? Should I nope. pick it up? Nope, you're fine. Everybody's like, nope. nope. Oh, look at that. 100% actually works. Or kind of. Oops. Wow. Didn't quite work over there. Oh, it works in that area. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to go 100% here. 100% yeah. opacity, is that what you're... Correct. Okay. And in here, because I want to see the Rodder toolbox. My computer is working really slow, running... What is it running? It's yeah, running... Yeah, you're, you're doing the Hangout, and you're doing uh, your screen share, and your and Photoshop automatic. all at the same time. Yeah, Google and Solar, Lightroom. So. I guess I could close <laughs> Lightroom. I don't want to open it back up again, though. And I want to fix this. This desperately needs fixing right here. So basically, I'm pulling this um, from this other layer, obviously, in at 100%. Now it's getting all dark. So now I'm going to go, oh, I don't know. Let's try that. Let's try 44%. Yeah, that's good. That sort of helps spread the love a little bit. Now I kind of messed this up. Now this is, see, this is where, like Annette, you said, was this really... <laughs> A challenge or you know how involved was it yeah, it's pretty involved because you have to get in there and like I want to clean this up I don't know how, if I'm gonna go through the whole thing but you because you kind of get the drift right mm -hmm. have that look a little bit realistic ish let's see is this I want to see whether this area is gonna come <laughs> so not maybe one of the uh, lighter ones yeah. And the lighter ones will probably let me get this in. I love this rodeo poster and this cow head. But I definitely wanted this, and I know it's going to wash out. So good enough there. And I know that's kind of grungy, but um, I'll pick it up probably. I don't know. Yeah, there we go. One of these lighter layers will do it. Okay. So now I'm going to go back out here. Let's see, where am I? Yeah, that's going to need more work. Now, I don't need any of... I don't actually need that. Boom, you're gone. This is like a reality show where you vote them off the island. So now, all I really need, I think... I'm kind of looking up here, because I remember that get, that gets a little gritty up there, and I want it to look a little more natural. So I'm at 44%. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. What that does is... I'm going to undo that and then redo that. So here it's, it's that unnatural kind of gritty, not, not, not good gritty, kind of like bad technique gritty, in my opinion, because the natural looks like that. I just want something not that gritty, maybe something in between, so maybe 50%-ish. So, you know, I'll pull that in. I mean, that's, this is, to me, some people will say, oh, nobody's going to ever notice that. That's too much detail. I don't think that way. I like the detail, and I think that's what gives it its depth. Um, if you've ever seen Colby Brown process a photo and the, de the detail mm. he cleans up, yeah. yeah. Detail, yeah. detail. He goes right to it, yeah. Yep. Here's another thing I'll do sometimes. Um, I think I will do it with this. I will take this and do a little um, unsharp, the, the sharpen, unsharp mask at what's that 168 that's too much for this 
I just don't want it to be quite as soft as it was. I want to see the hardware. I want that to be sharp, but not too gritty. So that ends up being like 80%-ish. Um, because that's all I'm going to use in that photo is for that, I think. And I wanted that to be sharp because I like the detail everywhere else. So, boom, combine. Okay, let's see. Are we almost to where we want to do this again? Not yet. No, not yet. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I see what we might want to do. See this area right here? It's a little blown out and bright, but that's a little bit ouch. So I think I'm going to, whoops, added an extra one, sorry. Oh, hello. Wait, I'm just learning how to talk. And hello. Talk. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. Yeah. Whoa, my thing's really big here. Okay. Wah. Here <laughs> yes, I talk like this to myself when I'm doing this by myself. <laughs> So I'm just going to blend back a little bit of this so we don't, I mean, it's not clear to begin with, so, but it just doesn't have to be this black blob. And what happened over here? Oh, yeah, we can pull that. In. Here's where we get to bring some of this in. Oh, and I forgot to make this. I'm just going to do the same amount of sharpening as I had on the last one. That just sharpens that up a little bit. And I want to lighten that up yeah, just a smidge. And I like the bottom part of the cow over here. But I don't think this cow is coming in yet. Yay. I think we we need Elizabeth's cow, I think. I know. We need to like have it like like he's sitting right up here. Look, he even has a cow skull. Yeah, and so, again, what I would do even more than I'm doing now is pay attention to these kinds of things, and I would make them look a little more natural because... The one thing Photomatics or any of the HDR processes does is if I blow this section in or, you know, blow it up, I mean, look at the, that's icky. Oops, that's too much. There. I don't like that. That doesn't work for me. So I would, I just kind of, this one, I just crawled through every photo and literally painted in the parts that I liked of every one. I don't know if I like that. I think I'm going to like the brighter one better on that section. But like I would, and there's so much detail in yeah. this particular photo. Oh yeah, a photo like this you can work hours and hours on. Yeah, I didn't really work hours and hours, but I worked for a while. So does that sort of make the point? Yeah. As far as, and then yeah. um. Yeah. Again, a major point. Or you, know, you can't you can't do it all in, in the photomatics. You have to go back to. Yeah. Pull those. And, other and things it's, out. Yeah. It's complex because there's a lot of light here and not a lot of light here and then a little more here because he had a skylight up, you know, up here out of sight. This light. So you just try to, my goal in photomatics is to get it as reasonably balanced as I can there. Here it's to get all the detail and all the colors and get, fix whatever needs fixing and get it so it's a complete image, pretty balanced, not too HDRE. And then I go from there, um, and I'll play with on one. I'll play with Nick. I'll play with um, let's see, what are my other thingies? Magic Bullet. Uh, this doesn't need a lot of noise reduction, particularly. And I'll I'll even bring in um, like if I want to use a use a uh, like a glow feature somewhere, I'll just paint in that section. Like this, I I like to make glow, so I'll go into On One Software and I'll use you know one of the ones that makes this glow because it, it's it's sort of like here is his workshop, but here is his haven, you know. Um, and I'll use I might use Nick Pro Contrast to help pop some of these colors a little bit. Um, maybe even Skylight Filter if I because I tend to like to warm things up. Um, if there's a signature sort of thing that I do, it's there's a warmth to things and a textural um, reality to things because that's how I experience the world. I like things warm. I like to feel warm. I feel warm. I see beauty and that feels warm to me. <laughs> so, it, you know, you, you, the more you understand yourself, which is I think part of what Annette was saying earlier, the more you bring yourself 
to these images and it starts to tell the story of you and how you feel and see and and then other people can start like I want you to feel this I want you to feel the detail and the, and the warmth and the textures of all this and how it's it's this creative workspace for this guy and he's put so much thought and and energy into his tools and his tidiness and I mean I even sat there and like was like oh he's got WD-40 and what else has he got he's got he's got what is this TKX I don't know what that is something for tires and radiator stop leak a first aid kit that's important I mean I love that stuff but basically essentially what I do is go through each of these layers pull it all in sharpen it as sharp as I can get it without killing it and then I go in and start bringing in the the warmth and the glow and the um, a little more dark and so on and so forth and I can keep going but I'm also realizing it's we've been here for an hour so how are you all feeling great should I do more yeah I'm just glad we went through that one because I missed that one before so which one this one that we this one here I wanted to see that process on this image I'm glad we did oh that. really okay cool I think um, I mean because I can I can do it like, now I'm now I'm like oh, wait oh this is bugging me over here. <laughs> <laughs> this is too dang dark. Well, we're, uh, I mean, you can pull out your, uh, you know, you can do the, uh, the the TV, pull the finished product out of the oven. Uh, what, where is yeah, your I, I final process of that? I hope I did that. I hope I pulled it out. Okay, yeah, that's right. The TV cooking class. Okay, thank you. I feel so much better about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really frightening. All right, where am I? I'm in Photoshop. So the finished product, please, Karen. Where did I put it? <laughs> I don't do this a lot, okay, people? I'm not that used to it. Okay, you know where I know it is? I know it's in my Google Plus. Uh, I know it's in my... Oh, I'm so lame, I swear. I I, this to happens to me all the time. I can find it in a second when I'm by myself, but as soon as I'm in a hangout, I can't do anything. I know it. It's like... <laughs> where is it? Well, I, where is it? I know. I put some of the other ones in there, and I'm like, where, where, where did the finished one of this one go? At least I can toggle back and forth. I know it's in this group. Be patient. My computer is, like, working really hard right now. You're doing so good, you little <laughs> Mac, you. <laughs> You're so cute. Okay, it's coming. I know it is down here somewhere. Oh, this is so lame. There it is. There it is. Come on, wake up. There it is. Okay. I mean, and, you know, this is what I did that day. So here's where I left off. Well, that was really good. <laughs> that was helpful, wasn't it? So I left off here, you know. That, that's there, A case could be made just for that. Um, the day that I processed it, that's what I did. Today... It might be different. I think I remember. Um, I think I did a little cross processing with some really deep navy shadow, because I just all of a sudden thought, "Oh, wouldn't it look? Wouldn't that look interesting with a little blue in the shadow?" Today, I'm looking at. It, I'm like, I don't know if I would do that today. That might make it warmer because I feel warm today. But anyway, so there you have it. Great. Now, how do I get back to Mecca? I'm going to. Pause sharing on that. <laughs> oh, I need two screens, and I don't have two screens. And screen share there. So, so I mean, basically, you know, with that garage, I wanted all the detail and all the crispness, but I wanted the warmth and the and the feeling of um of um you know what's that word for when you look back fondly on things. Nostalgia. Thank you. Um, which is why I might even add a little more, a little bit of glow here and there, just to kind of give it that dreamy feeling. I might. I don't know. But that's yeah. the beauty of processing. It, you can really base it on how you feel about the scene today, which you combine with how you felt about it then. You were going to say something, Ron. I'm sorry. No, I wasn't, actually. I was just going to say reflecting. <laughs> reflecting. <laughs> yes, reflecting. Yeah. Reflecting. And you might process it differently on a day that you're feeling differently. I exactly. 
Some days I get all experimenty, like I've got the new on one, right? So I'm going to go in there and poke around and see what they've got. And I'm like, ooh, that's really cool. And then I'll try something for play around with a with a technique for a week and then go, yeah, okay, I'm done with that now. <laughs> so it's evolving. That's why I say it's constantly evolving. And um, I know I've asked Annette a couple of times, like, how do you do that thing where you, uh, you know, I don't know, blend this in. She goes, oh, you just la, la, la. So that's what I love about sharing what we do because it can be something totally simple that I do or you do or whatever, and one of us will go, oh, I never thought of doing that. That is so cool. I like it when, when I'm doing the show with Jan. She always puts me on the spot. She goes. I'm well, Jan doing this, does actually. This. See, Jan does know. She always says, "I don't know everything," but you know, she pretty. Yeah, much she does that. know everything. She, <laughs> yeah, I know. she makes a living out of explaining exactly how to do it. <laughs> yeah. So, who we're talking about is Jan Kabili, and Jan and Ron host a show every other Tuesday called the Photoshop Show, which is next on. Is it next Tuesday? Yeah, on the eleventh. Next Tuesday. Yeah. On the December eleventh is their next show. It's so fantastic. I actually have to catch up. I, I got behind and actually learn things and, and then I go pretend like I knew it before. No, I don't really, but but that's what I mean is there's there's just so many places to learn around here and um yeah. you know. Yeah, but go. yeah with Jan Kabili in the room you're always intimidated about talking about Photoshop because she does know everything. <laughs> she does. But you know she's always so encouraging because she loves yeah. to see what you do with it. But you know she says the exact same thing. There are so many different ways and nobody can know everything. And so she's yeah. always learning and so are we. Yeah, whenever she brings guests on, she's yeah, she it's know. obvious that yeah, she's learning from them too. So that's right. Yeah. And you'll be joining us too on Tuesday, Dave. That's yes. Cool. Yeah. Dave's a rock star. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just a hangout groupie. Sing. When he sings, he sings in that really deep bass baritone voice. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> so so that's that. So what's next for you guys? Where I mean, where's everybody, like, Christmas is coming up. Is everybody winding down? Is everybody planning their next year? What's going on? I'm curious. Oh, yes. <laughs> I haven't even thought about next year, and it's like four weeks away. <laughs> oh, wow. Thanks for the reminder, Ron. <laughs> Ron, can we just enjoy Christmas, please? Yeah. I love your tree, Annette. Oh, thanks. <laughs> How big is that? It looks huge. Um, it's nine feet. Wow. Yes. That's very, very cool. I, I had a real surprise. I can't show you. I can't show you so quickly, but I'm just going to tell you. It's a milestone for a parent. My daughter sent uh, a text and a picture of her first Christmas tree in her place. <gasps> Aww, yeah. that's so, so sweet. She's, she's, yeah, she, that was really cool because, you know, she's had got her own real life tree you know it's so great so it's yeah it's a, a big moment for a dad you know wow how old is she she's 21 wow and you're only 29 how'd that work yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> you had her very young <laughs> yeah. my oldest is 26 um, and, and uh, she's had trees before too but but sarah she's yeah just sent this new picture and so oh it was so soon we, we have two at home still and two are gone on their own so that is very, very cool. Now, Annette, you have someone coming home, don't you? Someone, oh yeah, Daniel's going to be back for Christmas. Really? Yeah, we just got a letter from his commander saying that he'll be coming home. Um, but you know what he said? He said that when they come home from Christmas, it's going to be the, the absolute worst part of boot camp. So we're going to have to, as parents, nudge them to go back to boot camp because they won't want to go back. So we're like, oh, what's he going to be like when he's here, you know? Um, you mean, that's what the commander said, you mean? Yeah. He said they are gonna, they are not going to want to come back because they leave at the very worst part of boot camp. So, oh, wow. Phew. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So and then and then you know he kind of reminded us that if they don't come back, they are arrested and put in jail. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> oh, we're gonna God. make him get on the plane. <laughs> oh my God! Have you talked? I mean, have you? That, so that's not that's coming up. So have you talked to yeah. Daniel? I mean, is he like he on that? Wrote, he wrote a letter. Um, he wanted to call us, but we were on our cruise and uh, we were out of the country, so he couldn't 
contact us. He got one phone call um, a few, you know, two weeks ago. And so he called my cousin who's in the Marines and uh, just talked to him on Thanksgiving Day and stuff. And then the very first day at boot camp, he left a message on his phone and he, he only said two things. He just said two words. Boot camp sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, it's supposed to, right? Yeah. yeah. I just remember seeing him. What was it? Just a couple of days before he left. I know. I know. Karen, I gotta tell you, I don't know. I don't think you're following the chat, but Jaime says, admittedly, I most mostly tuned in just to listen to Karen talk. But she always Aww, yeah. In so addition to Karen, us, me, Karen. <laughs> Yeah. I love my Jaime. Yeah, I knew you did. I do. I just, he's such an artist and such a good person, and just, oh, he's just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you in the chat, uh, Daniel, we're talking about, he is the one who is our uh, Captain Hook. Captain and Hook. If, you, if you go back in, uh, oh. in Car Karen's uh, albums and, uh, and Annette's, uh, you'll see. Some pics of Daniel back there. My favorite picture of Daniel, Karen took. It's just yeah. best picture ever taken of him. Really? Really? Wow. Yeah, wow, I think cool. so. And that's all because of Karen was doing. What's she doing like this? Like, she was, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what she did that picture. Oh, it was so fun, Ron. You could, you should have been there. I She's should have. Quite the yeah. actress. Oh, there will come a day. Yeah. <laughs> there will come a day. There will come a day that we'll all get together and. Yeah, I, need to, I need to post some it. of those some of those acting lesson shots. So Karen, um, really? yeah, yeah. didn't post any of those publicly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, I looked at those and I just thought, oh my uh, God, why do I do those things? I'm such a dweeb. But, uh, no, you uh, great at drawing drawing the character out. I, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm willing to do what it takes, and it, and it worked because <laughs> man, he did. Uh, let's see if I can find those really quick. I can't find anything really quick. I actually might. Oh, oh my God. There they are. I love seeing the result of that day. That was that was wonderful. That day it was, was a fun day. <laughs> that was the first time Annette and I actually got to meet in person and and I didn't want her to go home. I wanted her to stay <laughs> ever. <laughs> and ever and ever. Okay, I'm gonna do a screen share of that those shots because that was so freaking awesome. Uh, oh my goodness. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently he doesn't like boot camp. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so sorry to hear that. Okay, what's another one? Um, This was one. Why can I not? That's because I smushed my oh, control. Wow. Oh, I love that. I love that one too. They had debated yeah. about playing with that one. This isn't wanting to change for me. That's because I stretched this out too far, and now I can't. That's definitely a movie poster, Karen. I know. But the other one I'm going to um, print uh, on canvas and put it in my home. Put it up, yeah. So beautiful. Which one? This one? No, the uh, that, that one. Yeah. yeah, that one. I love that one. Legendary. It's That's like you want, want the rope to kind of like swing, and he just grabs it and disappears out of the frame. So, Annette, I have okay, a Okay, I've got one for you here. Here's a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of direction. Oh, there's the one. That's that's it. That's what I'm thinking of. Oh, he's sitting there just okay. looking at her like, what? <laughs> Who is this? Who are you? <laughs> oh my God, I'm deranged. <laughs> I do. I look deranged. That is insane. I was an acting coach. I was an actor, and then I was an acting coach for many years. So. I can't. I couldn't help it because there's a Annette's all down. She's like Annette's such a legend. I'm like, we've got to help her. We got to. She's got to get the shot. And and you know, it's hard shooting your own kids. So I thought, well, maybe the wacky aunt can step in and yeah. be wackier than we're asking him to be, and maybe he'll go there. Where Where do you get your costumes from? Um, that one I got at a costume rentals uh, in Costa Mesa. I know you know you don't know where that is, Ron, but you just need to move to Southern California and That's you'll know all these things, right? Sold. Completely I'm going to go I'm down there. I'm coming early snowbird, spend six months down there, six months up here. There you go. Yeah, you. and Karen and Dave, too, and Elizabeth, I don't know where you're from, but you need to get here, too, if you're not. I'm about actually about partly between Karen and Dave and a little bit south. So. 
She's oh. near Yosemite. Yeah, I'm about an hour from Yosemite. Wow. Yeah, she does her day jaunts to Yosemite. And I'm like, I go there oh. for sunset sometimes. A minute. <laughs> I'm going to go over to Yosemite for a sunset. I'm like, whatever. Yeah, they, never, they never cooperate with me, though. I get there in the summer and all the thunderclouds have disappeared by sunset. I know. Yeah. It's challenging. It just oh. is. We got another, yeah, it was another. Oh, that's term. awesome. Yielding the sword. <laughs> yeah, I'm dangerous, man. Watch out. <laughs> that was a real sword, too. Yeah. And it pulls up thing up. And you're like blocking some invisible force behind you. Well, yeah, you got to do that. You can't let the invisible forces come and, you know, have in, in their the way. chat, they're asking, please tell us the next hangout date. Please. What? <laughs> Please, well, what? Please when when are we happens. doing this again? <laughs> really? Do they like it? Yeah, apparently, yeah. I'm really self conscious about doing this sort of thing. I, sh I should just not admit that and just be all strong, but whatever. I love them because I'm just learning Photoshop now. And if I'm well, going back and watching the shows with Ron and. Yeah. It's interesting because I, I really like Lightroom and I, and I enjoy playing with everybody's making presets now, and that's really neat. You can really learn. Lightroom and how it functions by using those presets and then deconstructing and them. Tweak them out, and yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, but I just I really like working at the pixel level and and being able to control. You know, oh, I want a little more light here, a little more glow there. I want. Yeah. You know. I, and I like all to... the programs. They all have something to like. You don't use every program for every image, but I'm just so glad. But my default is to go back to Photoshop. It just. Mm -hmm. Something about working in that program. Once you get over the hurdle, that learning curve, that first scary part, um, and start to get really comfortable with some of the basic tools, it really becomes quite addictive. Yeah. Working it. Yeah. I can yeah. spend hours and not even notice. Like, just they go by. I know. Yeah. And I like um, if you save it right, you know, Jan. Actually, in your last show, I think Jan was talking. Well, she probably talks about it more than just then. But if you save, if you go from Lightroom to Photoshop and then save it with the same name, you don't change the name. You can still go. You can go back and forth. Yeah, that's right. There's certain things in preserve the mm -hmm. layers. Yeah. There's certain things that Lightroom. Like I like Lightroom for the for the starting off. You know, an mm -hmm. image and. Uh, because really, the initial, the basic, the basic uh, module in Lightroom is is nearly identical to the controls in Camera Raw, and yeah. so it's really fast, and it makes your basic adjustments, and with really great speed, and you could do multiple images at a time. I know you can do that through Bridge and using different tools as well, but but Lightroom makes really streamlined the whole process. And then when you get down to the nitty gritty, it's for me, it's export to. Uh, either Photoshop or to a plugin and then to Photoshop. It's just my workflow. Yeah, I like that. I I, I do something sort of sort of similar. I use, you know, I like Bridge only because it's um. You know why I like Bridge? Because years ago, before I ever learned Photoshop, there was this dorky program called. What was it called? Oh gosh, going blank. And um, but it was just the way it organized. Jeff Moreau! Jeff! Yes. Finally made it. Hey! Hey, sorry. Hey, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. No, no. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to say hello. Hello. Um, but there was this uh, there was this program and it was all it really did was it, you could do some really basic adjustments, but it was the way it organized everything to where you could see it all really fast. And that's to me what Bridge does. And and I've got to get Jan actually explained to me, because I've got two computers. Plus backup, and it's just oh my god, it's a, it's a it's an organizational nightmare because I'm not good at organizing anyway. And so she told me how to get it so that the flow is right, so that no matter which computer I'm on, I've got the latest Lightroom, you know, CompuPic. <laughs> my husband just hollered CompuPic. He's watching apparently. CompuPic. There's this awesome little program of just for organizing and really basic. Um, and so Bridge reminds me of that, whereas Lightroom, you've got it like, oh, I want to work on that. Oh, I don't have it in Lightroom yet. But in Bridge, it's just yeah. there. Jaime uses true. Bridge. That's true. Jaime is a god, and he uses Bridge. Is he still in the chat? So defend me, my friend. I don't know. <laughs> Plus, you can, you can just go straight to Lightroom from Bridge. And then, of course, sometimes it... 
Hmm? I was gonna say I know a lot of pros that use their their workflow has always been with Bridge, and it has enough tools. If you use it the right way, you you can use it very similar to the way you use Lightroom by choosing multiple images. You can work with a slideshow system in RAW, so it's almost like Lightroom, very similar. Hmm. But it's not quite the same flow. There's something. Yeah, that. I don't think I would. Yeah, I wouldn't use it flow wise. I just like like it to look at my pictures. I like to get yeah. it into. Uh, I like it better for getting it into into Photoshop layers. Yeah. Well, for sure. And then it transports back in and puts it back in the catalog and all that stuff. Yeah. And sometimes it's going between programs. It's just so dang fussy. I just like to work. I just like to do my thing. Yeah, Jaime's, Jaime's still here. What do you uh, say? Well, he said, I'm glad to talk on the air if you want to invite me. <laughs> oh. Gee, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. <laughs> There are space. Yeah. I am such a, I swear to God. In the meantime, hi, Jeff. You made it just on time. How are you doing? Hey, sorry. I just walked in the door. You're just about to go live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're just about to go live an hour and a half ago. I told yeah. Dave that I might not yeah. be on time he, he at did, all. He did warn me. I didn't think it would be this bad, but. Oh, it it's was. okay. Well, it must have, it must have been. Must have been good. Uh, That's why it's an informal, <laughs> an informal hangout. You see, yeah. and if anybody's well, like exhausted or bored and needs to go, they can. They certainly can. Yeah. I just I'm because it's informal after all. Exactly. Yeah. It kind of feels good, you know, when Fresh we did yeah. we did uh, Life Through the Lens for so many, you know, almost a year, and it was like the Ed Sullivan Show, man. You you're on, go. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like we're so informal. I stress yeah, informal. So yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it was like the Three Stooges. I know, yeah, <laughs> or the seven of them. <laughs> the seven dwarfs. It's something. <laughs> anyway, so maybe Jaime Ibarra will he drop should, in. Yeah, once it gets to him. If he gets his invite, I don't know. I'd be curious. So what, you that. asked us about plants, but what are your what are you doing, Karen? What's what's up for Christmas? Well, I may go to a friend's and I may stay home. I don't know yet. Uh, I'm yeah. some fancy break. Jaime! Hello! Hello! This Hello. is Jaime Ibarra. Some of you may know. Uh, if you don't, you should. Jaime! How are you? Hello! You hope you can hear me. We can hear you just fine. Okay. We can even see you. It's fantastic, this modern technology. Have you Hold ever on. met I, Annette I, Biggers? Jaime? Jaime? Have you ever met Annette Biggers? I think he's delayed. I think he is oh, delayed. I don't think he has. Ever well, I don't think so. I mean, you need to meet Jaime, meet Annette. Annette, meet Jaime, because you two just need to know each other's work if you don't know. Hello, already. Annette Bickers. True artists at what they do. <laughs> and I just wanted to manufacture that introduction. Because that's what we do here. We make history. Yes. I want to return your 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 e noogie you gave me. Like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> that was good, wasn't it? I was, was not having happened. such a good evening, and I saw that. And I was like, okay, it's a good evening. Now. Yeah. <laughs> just like that. Bam! You, you just need it around with an e noogie. You just sometimes need an e, e noogie. You do. <laughs> How are you? What are you doing? What's going on? Did you watch? Did you did you see some of the show? I I used I saw the, the whole thing. Oh, did you? I showed yeah. them one of your one of your little techniques, which I felt guilty doing, but. Why? It's only a minor one. And, I think it's uh, interesting how, you, how the way you use it is not even the way that I use it. But it's, it's lo I love how this this whole I'm I'm a, I'm a fan of saying the whole uh, one one breeze stirs another. And it's interesting yeah. how you took it in the way that you saw that as a tool. You know, it's like it's it's on the on, at the core, I guess, it's a technique. But uh, the way the way you you took it and ran with it and did your own thing with it, it's like I always always have a lot of respect for any time someone does that. That's really cool. Yeah. You're really cool. No, you're really cool. <laughs> 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 oh, I just I love this stuff. I don't know, Ron. Well, Chris, you're still doing hangouts, but I think it's been long enough now. I'm starting to miss hangouts. Hmm. Yeah. Well, like you're not doing hangouts, well, you're still doing the odd Trey Ratcliffe show, and you're doing this with Dave, but this isn't a real hangout, right? This, this, is, is, an hangout. this is an informal hangout. That's right. So it's it's not the same as a real hangout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm still doing, I, I still do quite a few hangouts, so not as many as I used to. I had to, to kind of step back a bit from that. But. 
Cause you, yeah, Definitely, actually... the Photoshop show is is a mainstay. I'm still doing that. Yeah, it's such a good show. It is such a good show. I'm glad you like it, and I really, I really, I'll really be back with us whenever you want. So well, you thank you. I don't know. I don't know what the future of this one is. Um, did we already cover that? So people want to see more or something? No, we didn't. We somebody wants to know when, 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 but. But because it's informal, I had assumed that it's it was important. just still up in the air. It just well, it yeah. just sort of happens when it happens. However, I have to say, Brian Matias saw it the other night. Saw the first one. He goes, "I want to do that," and I was yeah. like, "Okay, let's do it." Speaking so of I Brian, think we might do one. Yeah. Oh, did we lose someone? No. Huh? Yes, we yeah. lost. Um, Jeff, I was going to say, speaking of Brian, I got to get hold of him since he's back because I was going to ask him if he wanted to showcase his his new suite on. Photoshop he show. would love to. As his agent, I can tell you he would love yeah. to. No, I'd love to have him on. I, I tried to get hold of him, but he was away and his email bounced back and all that stuff. He's back. He's working on his house. He was out having such a great time. And you're all about it. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Hi, May. What are you doing? Didn't you do a book? What are you doing? I'm sitting here right now. So you're working and you're and you're making new images and... And, yeah, uh, I've got a I've got a shoot with uh, Jessa um, on Friday. I'm really excited about. We have an awesome, awesome, awesome location that I'm not allowed to talk about. Really? And, uh, and, um, Everybody cool. needs a Jessa, a muse, someone to really inspire them to do great work. That's why it hangouts with you guys is really good because I always really inspired after we yeah. talk about stuff. It's a uh, it's it's. People say I'm lucky to have her. I was like, well, yeah, I think she's a little bit lucky too, or maybe it's a <laughs> full fortunate, maybe, or uh, but yeah, I just I just got through I just got through teaching earlier today, and and the fellow I was teaching was like, he's like, well, doesn't it get old, you know, shooting the same person over and over again? And I was like, well, I don't always just only photograph her, but why would I not do that? You know, it's like if you're on the same page with someone artistically, well, of course I'm gonna I'm gonna continue doing that. I don't see any, I don't see anything wrong with that. I mean if I had kids I'd likely be photographing the kids all the time. It's like you, you photograph you know where you feel like you're doing your best work. Well at least I do anyway. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. I know my dogs get sick of me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a dog or if I had a pet baboon like I'll have one day because what could possibly go wrong with a pet baboon, really? Oh, yeah. What could exactly. <laughs> My last you get a baby one, the baby ones are fine. Yeah. They'll like some stuff. Yeah, my, last horse, my last horse that I had, who was... Most horses were just horses. They were wonderful. But this one that I had, his name was... Uh, well, yeah. He, he just was... He was sort of like... Um, you're like somebody else is in there. That's like a semi-human thing. So photographs, you know, I was always taking photographs, and he'd be, he'd be fussing and looking here and there, and it would be it would be just I need that moment. And so he learned. I, I mean, he was a horse. I don't know why he learned this, but it would be the camera ready, and he would literally go. <laughs> he'd do that thing and he'd hold it, and then if my mother was doing it, if both of us, we'd both go. <laughs> It was hilarious. Um, that's, that's like a lot, a lot of people. You know, you, you, you point it at them and you, you'll get... I, I think I'm guilty of this too. You point a camera at me and I get a... You know, my wife tells me I get I get this certain look on my face, my, my camera face. And, you know. I, I'm sure most ph photographers, well, Jaime and Annette, I know you guys both shoot people, but the, the challenge for shooting people, especially not people you know well so much, but, but strangers, is getting over that point where you know someone's going to come in uncomfortable and you're... Your mission in life is over the next 20 minutes to hour and a half or however long you have with them is to find them. And um, that's, it's rewarding and challenging. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, that's, that's why I, I always, what, even, if I, even if I only have an hour to photograph somebody, I will spend at least half of that hour just talking to them. Just having a conversation. Pick up the camera. Yeah. Because I think if you can connect with them, and then during that connection, I'm kind of doing a little bit of a, a, a non-official kind of a psychological profile, and I'm trying to figure out like what 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 makes them make this face or that face. And you're never going to figure out everything, but if you can just latch on to two or three things, you yeah. know, 
uh, and and you can use those during the shoot. Like oh, I'll figure out like oh, what makes the person I'm photographing go huh? or or they'll do the, the flirty <laughs> thing where they pull the hair across their face or anything you can figure out and you use that later on. Because one thing I'll never ever ask anyone to do is I'll I'll never say okay smile or okay yeah. act this way or act that way because those. That's my job is to elicit that and to do it in a in a way that's is real, you know. And, um, what but, would I say exactly what you say? I actually tell tell people that I'm working with. Just let's just I'm just gonna have a conversation with you for a while. Don't even think about pictures. Let's just you know let's just have a talk. Exactly. And then I'll start taking pictures. And even when I start, I say I'm not even taking pictures yet. I'm just setting up exposures. And, just continue. The I, I lie. I do that lie to you. Like, oh no, 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 no. I'm just click, 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 click. No, I'm just getting my exposure. Click, 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 click. <laughs> what it That's does. It. I'm never, just... ever, ever going to be photographed by you now because I'm not. <laughs> yeah. but you know what? You know what? Within the first few minutes of that, you get a pretty decent shot. You turn the camera around and they go, oh my goodness. And you got your day's fixed. You're done because they, they just relax and they trust you. You have a, you built a relationship. In a few they trust you until they figure out you just lied. <laughs> No, but it's like yeah, I agree with you. Even 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 when I did just lie, if he turned the camera, but but look, and they go, but oh, I, I didn't okay. lie because I am checking the exposures and arriving That's at a good true. picture. Right? You just happen to have chosen the right one the first time, and then <laughs> had verified it five or ten <laughs> times after that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Annette, how do you do it? How do you start with somebody? Um, I usually, I kind of do what Jaime does. I put them at ease by just, you know, talking to them for a while and um, really getting to know them a little bit. And I just ask them a lot of questions that have nothing to do with what we're doing. And I get their mind off of being photographed. But I also put them at ease by saying, you know what, it, we're not going to keep the bad ones. We're going to delete them, <laughs> you know. So yeah. they just feel like, oh, okay, so they can't do anything wrong because I, I just assure them that, you know, we've got a delete button. You can't do anything wrong. You're never going to have a bad picture. And so yeah. that just kind of builds their confidence to just let go and not worry about looking weird or dumb, you know. So, But just putting them at ease and asking them questions about their life and stuff like that, it really helps. You know, it's kind of like having coffee with someone. Um, and that's what I tell them. I said, it's like having coffee. Let's just, you know, talk about life for a little bit, you know. And you can see what lights them up and what, what excites yeah. them. Yeah. You know, what does, like, make their eye, like, get big and sparkle, you know. Yeah. Um, and like Jaime said, you know, just a few things. If you can just, like, connect with a few things, then that's great. You know, you've you've got it. Have Does either of you ever had a half hour, forty five minutes go by somewhere in there where you're not finding much? I, I haven't done many portrait shoots, but where it's just like they're they're coming across, you're not finding anything that lights them up, bland. Or have you yeah. ever had like a complete yes. you have? Yeah. And that's when you get the alcohol out. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not kidding. Like we had this couple one time and they were they acted like they were so bored of each other. Like I think they've been living together for twenty years and they're getting married and it was just nothing to be together. There was no sparks and no oh my God. romance at all. So I was like, okay, we're going to go and have some margaritas. And um, I, I bought them two or three rounds. And the margaritas were super big, you know. <laughs> and it was really funny because after we went to this, uh, it was on the pier down at um, uh, San Clemente. And it was at the Fisherman's Wharf or something. After we had our little margaritas, I didn't have any because I needed to focus. But yeah. um, anyways, when they were done, they were having so much fun and they were what? laughing what? and they liked each other again. So, you know, I don't do that with every client. I've got a really hard one coming this Friday and I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Like, really, it's a hard one. <laughs> so, um, but you know what? It, the way I take off the pressure from myself is I, I just remind myself, the only thing that I have to do is to love that person. Mm -hmm. And um, if, I, if I truly love, like find a way or something about them that I love, I just totally adore them over, um, it really does just kind of break down invisible walls, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and it works almost every time. Yeah. 
But I've, I've had situations too where it's like you know op optimally you want to you I'm, I'm hoping that I connect with that person, but I used to I used to have this uh, this parameter where that connection had to be a, a positive thing, and I think ideally it will be. But then there was a couple of times I've I've shot some just outright just misanthrope people. I mean, they're just like, there was no good in anything. And we're just like, okay, it's just going to be like that then. All right, fine. <laughs> so they, these people never enjoy a delicious fruit cup or a ride on a roller coaster. It's like, oh, they just like to talk about, oh, I just don't, this makes me angry and that makes me mad. It's like, okay, well, I can just temporarily delve into that for a little bit and you find out what makes them even more so because that's just the way they are you know and sometimes there's nothing you can do about that you just have to accept that then I always kind of back to what you were saying is like you have to love that person or at least at least you have to you have to enjoy that moment with them even if it's not this might not be somebody I'm going to invite to dinner in a few weeks I may never see them again but at least I can just kind of put myself into their their misanthropic shoes for a bit, but even out of those photos, this this angry fire comes out, you know, and, and, and it does it does uh, shine through in the photo. Maybe they're not the most pleasant person in the world, but I say most of the people I work with hopefully are pleasant. They're yeah. like Karen. Boy, in those angry ones, you really wouldn't want to get tipsyfied. You don't know what'll happen. <laughs> don't 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 break out the the alcohol with them either. Bad things. Uh no, bad things. Really bad things. God, that's so funny. Yeah. I love our conversations, but I have to, it's almost midnight here. I know. It is getting late. We've been here a long time, yeah. and anybody who's still in the chat is like a hero for Good hanging here. Yeah, we got Christopher, <laughs> and Derek, and Tim, and yeah, yeah we've got a few. Awesome. Got probably some not, workers, too. Yeah. Not bad for an Us. informal hangout. <laughs> Yeah, not bad for a casual one with no real formal show or after show or anything like that. No, it's kind of the show is the after show is yeah. the show. It's sort of like an all-in-one printer. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I love the conversations we have and learning from each other. I do too. I think it's really fun. I'm trying to figure out a way, a fun way to to do this and I don't know. You know, bounce off of each other a little bit more. Maybe we do, we, you know, co-screen share. Maybe right. we all process the same photo. Wouldn't that be interesting? Oh, wow. Well, that would be fun. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, that would be so fun. That's we should do that. Yeah, that we should, would be like, do that. Like, totally do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to do that. Okay. All right, yeah, we got to talk. <laughs> we got to talk. So, um, well, on that note, we're going to go and uh, say goodnight. Uh, we'll miss you, but we'll be back sometime in an informal, casual, spontaneously, last-minute sort of way. And so you'll just have to be on your guard and uh, catch us when you can. Yeah. Um, love you guys. Love you guys out in the audience. Thank you for joining us, and uh, have a great evening. Bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye.